I met maybe two people out of all the people I seen on, this is during the daytime, on the street. Only about two people that I knew that was, oh God, it was a, it's a lot of people out here who was not about Jesus. I knew God exists, I, I didn't know him, but I knew of him. I, on Sundays, my wife would go to church and I'd watch the cars, watch the motorcycle, and look back and say, hey, yeah. I'm good, I'm all right. I get in my car, I ride through the park. Man. Hey, look at me, man, look at me. Mm -hmm. This is me. And everybody fell into that too. Man, that's Daryl, that's Debo, that's Daryl. Man, what's happening now? Hey, man, you got it going on, man. You got it going on. I have nothing, man. I ain't no look. If I died, then I would went to hell. I would went to hell wow. if I died. I didn't know Jesus. I didn't know him. I went through a divorce. Cause uh, I wasn't paying my wife, I'm pornicating all kind of stuff. So I ended up coming here, lost a few things, but I was still, I'm all right. And so when I got here, I was going through the, uh, we was doing the cleaning business with Kaiser Permanente, me and my cousin. We had a crew of seven buildings, so we was doing pretty good. I go to the club party, and just, you know, I'm snoring cocaine now, I'm just trying to be in with everybody and everything like that. But anyway, our bookkeeper ripped us up, man. So we never, we never followed up on the, on the business, and so we ended up going bankrupt. I lost everything. That's when I lost everything. I had to, then I had to move. I put all my, all my stuff in, in storage and didn't pay for it, so all that's gone. Now I'm down to ground zero. I'm at a friend's house. He got to a point where he got to do something. He says, it's a place called Atlanta Union Mission. You can go there and they probably help you. So I went there. That's where I was at in, in, in Atlanta. Homeless, on the street, not knowing anything. That's when I started hearing about salvation, when I was on the street, when I was down, when I needed God. God, that's what God did. God said, go ahead, devil, do what you want to. Put him down there so he can come to me. Mm. And that's what happened. I came to the Lord. And, uh, How old were you at that time when, when you surrendered your life to Jesus for uh, real? About 40. 40, 41, 40, something like that. Mm. Yeah. Greatest is he that is in you than he's of the world. I always remember they told me that. Amen. They always told me that. And uh, they asked me uh, about who wanted to get saved down at the church. And I, and I wanted to. I wanted to be saved. You'd be surprised how, much, how many people are saved on the street. Just because you're homeless don't mean you're not saved. Mm. A lot of people put that in there. You don't know Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's happening because a lot of people, things happen in people's lives. And like me, I got saved while I was out here on the street. Mm -hmm. I mean, let me tell you, when I got saved, where they was at me, man, they, were, they really were at me. Uh, I was walking down the street, it seemed like something was behind me for some reason. I wouldn't look, though. I wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't look. I was a little kind of leery, but I wouldn't look. That's when I called my mom. I said, I'm call my mother. So I called my mom and I told her, I said, Mom. I just gave my life to Jesus Christ. And she said, that's good, baby. Plop. And then the phone just went dead. I said, Mom, what happened? So I hung up the phone and came back. I dialed the phone back. I'm outside, because the bank of phone people used big back then, before the cell phone, cell phone time. I called again and said, this number has been disconnected. And then while I was doing that, the sidewalk above me, some girls would walk around. They looked down. I seen them look down. They said, wonder what's that behind him? And I never looked behind me, but I know that was a, one of the demons or something that was behind me causing me not to be able to contact my parents and let them know about Jesus. And um, it followed me out throughout that day. Every time somebody said, wonder well, what's that? I heard that several times people said, what's that behind him? But I never looked. And right up the street here, I went to this church. And uh, I wanted to go in. It was like four or five in the afternoon. And I knocked on the door, passed open, and then the maintenance guy he came in. I said, can I go in and pray? The maintenance guy really didn't want me going, you know, I guess. And I said, all I want to do is just pray. Please let me go in. So the pastor let me go in. And I felt comfortable. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. I stayed about maybe 10, 15 minutes. And I came out. Then I went down to church on the street here. And then I talked to one of the guys. And I was telling him what's going on. He said, say this. He said, better, greater that's in you than he's of the world. I couldn't get it right, though. I was just, I'm, I'm new at this. And then I walked down the street, I was trying to say, Gary, he ain't even worried, he's on you. And this other guy would say, oh, he can't get it right, he don't know what he's doing. He kept walking by. I said, what? Because he's in the world, oh, you ain't got it right. 
I look over there, I see somebody walking there. And you know, during that particular time, I met maybe two people. Out of all the people I seen on, this is during the daytime, on the street. Only about two people that I knew that was, oh God. It was a, it's a lot of people out here was not about Jesus. And this young, and this old lady, I told her later, I'm saying, she said, oh, thank God, thank you good, you're gonna be all right, thank you, Jesus. And she said, and kept on going. This one guy said, this one white guy said, uh, hey, I just, I just uh, gave my life to Jesus Christ. He gave me money. I said, I said, I don't want your money. He gave me $20. You know I dropped that $20 on the street? I don't know what was going through me at that time. I should have kept the money, but I did. God wanted to talk about Jesus. I, I, was, I needed him. I needed somebody to be able to talk about Jesus at that particular I needed it so bad. I wanted it so bad. I remember dropping on my knees, and I was crying out to God, help me, Jesus, help me. I remember looking up at the sky, and the sun was a particular way. I don't know, it was something going on. Something was happening. Something was happening. And one guy came down and hand in hand and had three, three fingers. If one finger was cut off, he was an ambassador. He, he pulled my hand, I grabbed his hand, and I felt safe with him. He picked me up and took me down to the church. There's some demons out here, and, and, and it's a lie. The devil is working. The devil's alive and he's working. Mm. Me and I got a, two friends who we we into Christ, and we always talk about Jesus. Even when we're doing, doing the drugs and stuff, we always talk about the Lord. You know, when I'm being, not being ashamed of him, I'm ashamed of what I'm doing, but I'm not ashamed of the Lord. Come on. I love Jesus. I love him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Daryl, looking back at, at your life, uh, you're 65? Mm-hmm. Your birthday just passed. Mm -hmm. What can you say that Jesus has done in your life? He brought me to the kingdom. He saved my soul. He saved my life a few times. With the bullets flying over here and having shootouts and stuff like that. And he just told me to be still, don't move. And bullets weird across. I've heard bullets go over my head. I know what it sounds like for a bullet to pass over your head. I know what that sounds like. He saved my life. And he's, he's instilling me the fear of God. God helps me so much. And uh, I don't know. What are some last words that uh, you can just offer up to the people who are watching your testimony right now? Wherever they may be, all over the nation, young, old, mm -hmm. what can you tell them? Wherever you at. Jesus is the way, okay? Not Allah, not Buddha, not none of those people. They gonna learn. I, I got a lot of friends like that, who had Muhammad this, Muhammad that. Allah, no, Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. And you're gonna find out, I try to talk to a few of my friends in a, in a mild way, because way, people get offended. People get offended sometimes. But Jesus is the only way. And uh, if you love, if you know God, get to know Jesus. Get to know him. Talk to him. Just pray about it. If you don't believe him, ask him to show you. He'll show you. He'll show you. 